Let's take the following example. I took this example from Chapter 11 of Risk Management Financial Institutions uh, by Hull. Um, it's um, example 11.2. He wants to estimate uh, the value at risk um, of a loan book using a Gaussian coppola, right? which in this case means worst case default rate. Right? Suppose that a bank has a total of 100 million of retail exposures of varying sizes with each exposure being small in relation to the total exposure. The one year probability of the fall for each loan is 2% and the loss given to fall for each loan is 40%. The copula correlation is estimated as 0 0.1 in this case. So we're using this formula, this Gaussian formula, and we set out a probability of default, and we have the default rate, and then we have this uh, correlation estimate. Uh, the copula correlation uh, parameter is a, a measure of the correlation between each pair of obligers um, and it might be thought of uh, intuitively as the degree to which when things go wrong uh, they go wrong together uh, so increasing this magnitude uh, generally will increase the level of value at risk um, and we'll see that later so we have to work out, using the Gaussian coppola, we have to work out uh, the worst case default rate uh, for one year at the 99.9% .9 confidence level. And we take uh, as an input into that calculation, into the VAR uh, calculation, we uh, take um, the normal cumulative probability of this ratio and this ratio is made up of the sum of the norm, norms inverse, uh, 0 0.02, which is equivalent to the probability of default, plus uh, rho times the square root of rho, and again we're multiplying by this uh, norms inverse. And in Excel, to implement norms inverse, it's norms inverse. And we can look at the function here. Uh, this function is available, returns the inverse of the standard normal cumulative distribution as a mean of zero, standard deviation of one. Okay. Um, so we'll see how that's implemented in a second. Okay, and then we divide by one minus rho. Okay. Okay, so to set this up in Excel is relatively easy to uh, do. Um, we have to work out uh, the inverse of the normal cumulative probability of 0 0.02, which is the probability of default. And in Excel, we can read that just simply by taking norm inverse 0 0.02. And likewise, um, we have to work out the inverse of the normal cumulative probability of 0 .09, 0 0.999. And again, norms inverse uh, produces a result equivalent to uh, 3.09. Uh, however, if we were to read this value from the tables, the normal can so from a set of tables typically that come as, um, in examinations, uh, it's not so clear how that value might be obtained. Um, the first problem is. Um, there are no negative values uh, in the normal distribution table uh, in the tables available um, in our exam. So you can see here it's just typically the this 
range of values here is excluded from the tables. I need the negative range and the minimum value starts at this point here 0 and the minimum value the area under the curve going back is 0 0.5 so the minimum value we start from is 0 but we're looking for norms inverse 0 0.02 uh, that cannot be read directly from the tables uh, so what we typically do is we because the normal cumulative probability is bell shaped and uh, symmetric we read uh, the normal cumulative probability or the inverse of the normal cumulative probability of 0 0.98 and we take the negative of that value so we, we go down into the tables and we come to a value as close as possible to get to 0 0.98 which is here and then to extract uh, the z value consistent with this cumulative probability we get uh, 2.06 there's no equivalent issue surrounding reading the inverse of 0 0.999 because, because when we read uh, that value, uh, 0 0.999, it reads directly as 3.09, okay, which is what we observe when we uh, call down the Excel function norms inverse 0 0.999. Uh, then uh, we work through, once we take those values, we work out what the worst case uh, default rate happens to be. So, um, so we estimate uh, what's inside the brackets here we just open up and we compare um, the what's inside the brackets so we have so we have um, t19 this is t19 plus 0 0.1 0 0.1 is the level of row we take the square root by putting to the power of a half and then we multiply it by t22 and uh, d22 is the n inverse 0 0.999 and that gets divided through by 1 minus rho 1 minus the 0 0.1 and again we're taking the square root to the power of a half okay once we've made that estimation we must uh, read that value from the normal distribution tables again it cannot be read directly typically what you would read is you would round to two decimal places so you'd go 1.1 and across to 3 and that 87 0 8 value should be taken away from 1 which would leave you with a normal cumulative probability of 0 0.12824 and um, that's the value then we take for worst case default rate if we take the example we have here of a 100 million dollar uh, loan book with a, a loss given default of 0 0.4 a loss given default of 0 0.4 um, to estimate the value at risk we take the loan principal L 100 million by the 0 0.4 loan given default multiplied by the worst case default rate and when we work that through we have a value at risk at the 99.9% .9 confidence level of 5,129,484 okay then we could consider we could rerun this estimation again using a data table in excel just to observe the effects what if we changed row what if we change the value for the probability of default um, I've set out the same exactly the same calculation here I set it up in a data table data table done the usual way 
where we set up different values of row, different values of the probability of default. What we observe is as row increases, the level of regulatory cap, the level of value at risk increases to the point where we converge to loan given default. And likewise, as we increase uh, the probability of default, we can observe that the value at risk increases in line. Right? Um, when we graph that and estimate a value at risk graph, so we take, a, take that data table that we worked out and set it up as a graph, what we observe is as row increases, there is a steady increase in the value of risk. And also as the probability of default increases, we get also an increase, a steepening of this, uh, of the curve here. So that we more quickly get to as the value probability of default, probability of default increases, we also get an increase in the value of risk. Um, a related issue here is how does the BAL2 framework, regulatory framework, use the value at risk to estimate, use the worst case default rate to estimate uh, regulatory capital. And under BAL2, uh, there's a provision for internal rating based approach where um, the BAL uh, Accord uh, specifies how much capital must be set aside in order to have sufficient uh, reserves to absorb potential losses from the loan book. So we might ask the question, how does the BAL2 Accord make use of the valued risk framework to estimate appropriate capital requirement on the internal rating-based approach. And there is both a foundation approach and an advanced approach. So to move from the valued risk um, to uh, working out the level of capital, we could consider this formula again. And instead of thinking of the loan, we might think of the exposure at default. And to calculate the minimum capital requirement, uh, it necessitates working out uh, the worst case default rate and then we subtract away uh, the probability of default and we might rationalize this by taking a look at this diagram here and what this diagram said is the distribution of losses on a particular loan book it's a, a Gaussian coupler if you like the value at risk we worked out, right, estimates the full extent of the value at risk, the losses that potentially could happen at a percentile level set out by 0 0.999. When we're calculating the economic capital, we're subtracting, if you like, the expected loss or the mean of the loss distribution from the value at risk. In other words, what we're trying to determine for regulatory capital, we're looking at this area here in the distribution. For regulatory capital, the formula then that we use, uh, consistent with the internal ratings-based approach, is the exposure to fault times loss given to fault, and then the difference between the worst case default rate minus the probability default, the expected level of loss.